Welcome to the Foundational Gifts Inspirational Podcast, hosted by author, speaker, and life strategist, Nicole Kurtzie. Nicole offers her spiritual gifts to encourage us all to live boldly and to fan the flame of God's gift in us. For the next 15 minutes, enjoy this infusion of spiritual strength and practical action. Well, hola, 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 and welcome back to the Foundational Gifts Show here on the CWA Radio Network, where we give you a 15-minute biblical infusion to help you fully step into the calling of God on your life for ministry and for service. I'm your host, Coach Nicole Kirksey. Follow me on Twitter at Coach Nicole and visit our Facebook page at Foundational Gifts. So I am still outside. The weather is cooling off from the summer, but I don't care. I'm going to stay out here until I can't stay out here anymore. Today is a beautiful, gorgeous, sunny day where I am. My co-hosts are actually still the air conditioners that are going off uh, and around my neighbors. Birds are chirping, kids are playing. Um, So I hope that you are enjoying the space where you are, wherever you are today. Um, On today's show, I wanted to talk to you about an article that I found on Christianity Today. The title of the article is Three New Spiritual Disciplines for a New Technological Reality. Um, The link to the article is in the show description page. And the author of this particular post, it's actually on a blog, the Thinker's Blog at Christianity Today. The author of that is Kathleen Mulhern. She uh, is a teacher of Church History and Spiritual Formation at Denver Seminary and the Executive Editor at Patheos.com. Patheos is the largest religious and spirituality site on the web. I did not know that, uh, but I have seen articles from there. And so she's the executive editor there. So this was a great article, and I loved it because I know for myself, I really struggle um, to stabilize the spiritual disciplines in my life, meaning that for me at least, there are times when I am really, really big on Bible study. So I'm studying, studying, studying for sometimes hours and hours a day. And then I go for periods where, you know, I may read a scripture or two um, and just kind of meditate on it maybe throughout the day, uh, but I'm not in my word as much. And I struggle to just sort of have a consistent diet if it, you know, if you, if you, if you know what I mean, like not so much, I don't think you can really overdo the word, but kind of spending a consistent amount of time and a consistent time of day. I really am a creature of habit, so I'm figuring out why it is that I'm having trouble with this particular habit. Um, I am a person who prays without ceasing, so I do pray throughout the day, but of course some days are more prayerful than others. And so I'm wondering on those days where I'm getting in a little or a lot less prayer than I would like, why I don't carve out time at the end of the day to really hear from God is really what I'm after. I do want to talk to God, but I mostly want to hear from God um, and just being disciplined about that. Uh, Spiritual disciplines, uh, there are a lot of definitions of it, but one definition I found that's great is the disciplines for spiritual life in Christ. And it's really based in the book of Romans chapter 12, chapters 12, verses 1 and 2 to talk about us uh, renewing our minds and being disciplined in our lives and offering our bodies as a sacrifice, just really our whole life having some structure and practices that really get us and keep us uh, living closer to Christ. So when I saw this article uh, really framing our disciplines within our lives today, it really helped me because if you think about the traditional disciplines, they take a lot of time and a lot of space and our lives are so busy and moving so quickly um, lately. There's so much technology. It seems like our schedules and days are so full and carving out that time and space could be a uh, very complicated and so the author here talks about this one of the things that she says is research is showing that our brains are actually changing shape and the way that they function based on how much technology we're using as a society day by day and um, even people who people who know that and people who are actively involved in the tech in tech fields actually tend to limit their own children's access to technology. So that should really tell us a little something about um, the role of technology and the impact in our lives, but it's not like we can avoid it. It's not like we can set it aside. So we have to really figure out how we can integrate, uh, not integrate uh, technology and the use of technology into our spiritual lives and how we can 
organized our disciplines and spiritualized to respond to the reality of our life again we can't get away from these hugely busy schedules and all this technology it is what it is where we are um but we can certainly um take control of our lives get get our lives disciplined one of the things that uh, my interim pastor said today is that we it, it doesn't matter where we are in history so when the bible was written people were people and people are still people now so even though our lives were very different the patterns of people are the same and so we still need the disciplines of spirituality to get us and keep us closer to god it really is just how these manifest so our author today was suggesting three things that we can do in our world that may not have been as big a deal in in even in the previous generation and certainly not as Bible times. They may have had a whole lot of time and space to do these things, but we have to demand these things in our lives so that we can be more spiritually disciplined and grow more. So let's talk about um, the suggestions that the author makes. The first one is she suggests that we actually read a whole book and read it slowly. So that may sound to you like, how is that a spiritual discipline? Well, I don't know about you, but I have about 40 unread books lying around my office. I pick up a book, I read it, you know, I read some parts of it, uh, whether it's reading for pleasure or if I'm reading for ministry or if I'm reading for spiritual development or growth or, or whatever it is, I go into something and then I don't finish it. Why? Because the next important thing comes up or the next um, responsibility comes up and, and I go back and, and the bookmark is in the middle of the book towards the beginning of the book or almost at the end, but it didn't finish. So she's recommending that we get more disciplined and actually read it through. So what she's saying is that our, the way that we read now, like reading, you know, social media posts, um, and things really rapidly, it actually, it, it's all sort of information based and it's constantly, constantly coming to us. We're actually being uninformed or misinformed or she uses the phrase deformed uh, rather than informed and so in order for us to really get what we need from what it is we're reading she says quote it needs to be countered with quiet focused long reading that trains the mind there's Romans 12 again that trains the mind in inner listening end quote um, especially around spiritual reading um, she talks about this concept of reading slowly, the slow reading of sitting still with our thoughts until what it is that we're reading helps us to formulate our own ideas about what we're reading. So we learn to think about what we're thinking about when we read slowly. And that's a huge discipline. Um, the Bible talks about just being still and having this sense of quiet uh, and, a, and a slower pace and a sense of focus just some um, concepts, the concept of peace. The Bible tells us so many different times in the Bible to pursue this sense of peace where if we're constantly scrolling, I'm not sure we're at peace. But if we're sitting still purposefully and intentionally reading something, it's important, especially if it's something that God has to say to us. Proverbs uh, 46 and 10 tell us to be still and know that God is God. Well, the best way to know that God is God is to actually be still. To be still and ingest God's word, the things of God. Uh, when we read slowly and we focus, we get a better understanding. Again, as, as we're, if information is just flying to us, flying to us very, very quickly, it's hard for us to really think about what we're thinking about and how we understand that. Reading something in full slowly helps to build our understanding. And there are tons of scriptures on understanding. I just have a few. Um, Proverbs 2 and 2 tell us to tune our ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding again read in full slowly to concentrate on understanding proverbs 313 says joyful is the person who finds wisdom the one who gains understanding so there's a benefit to us to sitting still and focus on what we're doing particularly in reading and uh, acts 17 11 says and the people of berea were more open-minded than those in thessalonica and they listened eagerly to paul's message they listen. So you got to stop and be still in order to listen. Then it says they searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. So in order to search the scriptures day after day, you have to read 
And you got to read slowly and you got to read persistently. Um, so those are some good scriptural principles for us to follow. Um, and certainly uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 to tell us, tells us to study, to show ourselves approved. And in order to study, you have to understand what you're reading. You can't scroll it through. That's not studying. Um, so again, one of the spiritual disciplines recommended in the article is to read a book. Uh, read the good book, I would add, a whole book very slowly. The next discipline that she mentions is about walking. She says, walking slowly around the block or the local park, walking slowly. So I know some people live in cities where nobody walks <laughs> ever. Um, some people live in cities where everybody walks all the time and that's great. And she's not talk she's talking about non-purposeful walking. So you're not walking to somewhere, you're walking for walking's sake. She also talks about not walking for like the purpose of getting your steps in or exercising. Again, you're walking for the sake of walking to take in your environment and to be accessible to the other people who are in your environment. She calls it um, ambitionless walking without any purpose other than the willingness to be present. Again, there's that stillness again, that focus, willingness to be present to a neighbor. Um, one of my mentors posted recently on social media that she was, uh, she met her neighbor for the first time. She bought her house, I think a couple of years ago and she met her neighbor for the first time. And I don't know how long the neighbors lived there, but they had an opportunity to talk about the fence that they shared and the tree that was growing and, you know, just really get to know one another. Now she knows his name and how many of us don't even know our neighbor's names because we're not fully present in terms of being neighbors outside um, she talks again about the spiritual rhythm of renewal and how, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, how important it is to minister to our neighbors. Well, we, if we don't know who our geographic neighbors are, you know, we know there's different types of neighbors, but to our geographic neighbors, the person right outside of our door, then we can't really do ministry. I have the opportunity to pray with a neighbor who lives right across the street from us. Why? Because they were neighborly to us. They're friendly with everybody. They moved in. They reached out to everyone. They introduced themselves. You know, we tease each other about our rival college football teams and this and that. Well, the husband had a health crisis and uh, he's really in dire straits. And so the wife was crying. My husband saw her. We went over, we prayed, and we were able to visit the husband in the hospital. And they're strong believers, which is also wonderful uh, that we can connect and minister to each other in that way. But again, being outside Willing to walk, willing to stop and talk is the only way that we would have ever met them. So the Bible talks in various places about interacting with other people and the value of that. James chapter 1 verse 19 says, let every person be quick to hear. Well, we're quick to drive by. <laughs> we're quick to keep going, but we're not as quick to incline our ears to stop to hear one another, especially if it's, they're people we don't know. And then the 22nd verse says, be doers of the word. So there's all kind of concept If we want friends. We're supposed to show ourselves friendly. Again, the ministry of our neighbors. We should be reaching out to the people who are in our, our area. In fact, when the Bible talks about loving our neighbors, there's tons of scriptures around that. There's Mark 12, 31. There's Matthew um, 22, James. Uh, I, I wrote this stuff down and I can't read it myself. And it's James 2 and 8, Leviticus 19 and 18, Galatians 5 and 14. Um, talking about loving our neighbors. And that is so important, again, for us to just get out there and and, it's, and, and to be available. Um, Romans 15, chapter 2, talks about building our neighbors up. So if we're not out and available and walking around purposefully, we don't know who's even around and who may need to build up. Who can we say hi to? Who can we just stop and listen to, be still, and hear what it is that's going on in their lives? Galatians 6.10 tells us to do good to everyone especially in the household of faith, but not only in the household of faith. So our geographic neighbors may or may not share faith with us, but it's important that we do good to them anyway. And being available and meeting them is one way to figure that out. Uh, Proverbs 3 tells us to help our neighbor when we have it, uh, when we have the opportunity to do so, not when it's convenient. So that's the story where the neighbor's knocking on your door and you don't tell them to go away. Um, come back later when you have what it is that he needs, you help them right now. So that's true, again, for us to walk slowly around the neighborhood or our local park to see what's happening in our neighborhood. It also teaches us how to pray, right? If we could see more of what's going on in our geographical area, 
we know how to pray and we may know how to give if we need to give financially, if we need to volunteer, uh, we need to offer our own spiritual gifts to minister in that way, being present uh, as one practice of a spiritual discipline. So that was number two. And then the third spiritual discipline that the author recommends is to have a slow conversation. It says, conversing slowly. So this is about saying what we mean, meaning what we say, being our true selves, uh, being vulnerable enough to be seen. The Bible talks about us being known. Uh, So being willing to be known. And so getting to know our, our, our environment, so our coworkers, our neighbors, our church friends, um, particularly the people of faith, uh, getting to know one, one another through conversation. So we're willing to be known by being genuine, and we're also willing to stop and be slow and listen to other people and learn more about them so that they can be genuine and open with us as well. So the Bible talks a lot about listening um, and hearing and being fully present and understanding. Ephesians 4, uh, 29 tells us to think about what it is that we're saying and not to let corrupt communication come out of our mouths. So that's obviously negative things, but I also think it's, it's, it's false and phony things, if you will. Um, and there's a difference between being polite and appropriate on the one hand and being sort of putting on on the other hand, right? So we just don't want to pretend like we're something or someone else that we're not. Um, the actual scripture says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. So think about being good and helpful uh, when we're choosing to interact with people. Matthew 5.37 talks about simple and clear communication. So we don't want to use a lot of extra words, a lot of big $10 words when a dollar word will do. Um, Again, to to be honest and genuine in ourselves. The passage says, just say a simple yes, I will, or no, I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. I think part of the reason why it's from the evil one is because, again, we're putting on more than necessary. You want to build trust with those people with whom you're conversing. Even if even if this is just a new person you're meeting, you may not ever see them again in life. You want to be known as this trustworthy, um, honest person. You don't want to add. Don't be extra, as the kids would say. Um, So being simple and being clear and being genuine we should also love one another with agape love. First uh, Peter four eight says, "Most important of all, continue to show deep love for one another, for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins." Just be forgiving. Just let a lot of stuff go. I'm in a season like that where I need to have a lot of conversations with people with whom I have to let a lot of stuff go, and I'm sure they feel like they have to let a lot of stuff go on my side as well. But we cover each other when we do that. We're able to move forward. And Proverbs 17 and 9 says, Love prospers when fault is forgiven. But dwelling on it separates close friends. So if we just hold on to stuff, we can't even have a conversation. We can't be genuine. We can't listen. We can't be slow. We can't be present because we're holding on to bitterness. We're really blocking love, which is what we should be known by. So even just having a genuine conversation with any, with, in any context Right. So strangers on the street while we're walking around uh, people in our book club, we're talking about the books that we read for spiritual growth. You know, our close friends, our family member, our church uh, members, our co-workers, uh, people with whom we've had conflict, whatever the case may be. Having those slow, conscious conversations is one form of spiritual discipline. How many times have you been talking to somebody and you had to be like, Lord, what is it? What should I hear? What should I say? What can I offer? What can I learn? How can I help? All along while having a conversation. But again, it goes back to the other uh, disciplines that she talked about, which is being slow when we're reading, um, slow and present when we're walking. It's all really about slowing down uh, to be disciplined. There's another article um, I didn't put in the description, I don't think, uh, that talks about a list of spiritual disciplines and it breaks it up into two groups called growing, um, I'm sorry, the disciplines of abstinence and then the disciplines of engagement. So there are times when we need to pull away um, 
and it really just to be us and God. And there's some disciplines around that. Uh, doing the Sabbath is one version of that. Fasting is, is a version of that. Really getting away and just getting closer to God. And then there's a discipline of being engaged. Uh, of growing, of outward ministry. So that's stuff like reading the Bible. Uh, when we worship uh, corporately together. Uh, corporate prayer. Having genuine uh, Christ-based friendships. Even times of personal reflection or something that you could share with somebody else. These are all examples of disciplines um, that go outward. So disciplines are all, again, for the purpose to keep us on track, track to constantly growing uh, in Christ. So I encourage you to read that particular article. And that is our show for today. Please be sure to join us here next time on the CWA Radio Network. And until next time, awesome. You have been listening to Foundational Gifts, where Nicole Kirksey shares ideas to help move you upward and forward into your next level. Be sure to join us in our online community at the Foundational Gifts page on Facebook to continue in this journey of bold living.